Hi everybody, my name's Sam. As you can see, I've had a haircut, and trimmed the beard, managed to get to the barbers because uh, here in the UK, our lockdown restrictions have been relaxed somewhat. So today's painting is here to inspire you and to look for the brighter future. Today's reference has come from the computer game Planet Zoo. It's, uh, it's got creative tools so you can make landscapes and trees and, and stuff and put them where you want. Um, I'm using this as, as a way just to create a reference photograph um, of my own design. So the whole creative process is mine, uh, but I'm using tools um, digitally from beginning to end this time. So uh, that'll be an interesting way to go. Now, before we start, let's take a look at this uh, reference picture. As you see, I've created a nice light, sunny, distant view. We've got a nice reflection in the water and the darkness in the foreground so that we feel and everything is sort of pointing towards these trees and this gives us a, a feeling of movement into the painting and a, an excitement for the future so let's get on with it and the first step is to just put a basic idea of where everything is just drawing a quick sketch onto the canvas as you see i put a very base sort of neutral gray as the canvas so we've got something to work from and we're not working from from brilliant white it just sort of helps us um, juggle the painting a little easier I'm gonna block in these trees put a bit of this uh, red down here to get this sort of nice sort of orangey color into the water uh, there's quite a lot of blue here at the front but it's not this bright but i want to put this down because the color will mix into it in the future we're using a digital oil brush uh, the filbert brush from painter 2020. it's uh, it's 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 a nice brush i always like filberts in in the real world uh, they have a, a sort of uh, smooth rounded end uh, with a flat edge um, that allows you to put in quite a lot of color when using the the, the sort of the, the wide edge and then you can turn them on the side and put sort of thinner lines that's, that's a really useful technique to use in both digital and traditional paint. right now we're just getting the the basic color onto the canvas we're not really trying to make it look too pretty or, or too detailed uh, we're really just getting the color on the, on the canvas here um, it can look as messy as you like at this stage. Uh, we, we'll go almost all over this before the end of the painting. Today's painting, I'm treating as close to a realistic painting as possible. We're not using any of the tools inside Painter other than the basic brushes. We're not doing any layers or tracing papers or any of those type of things. We're literally just looking at the reference photograph and then working from it. While there's absolutely nothing wrong with using the tools inside a digital painting program, and there really isn't, they're very, very useful. In this case, I wanted to simulate an oil painting absolutely without resorting to these kind of um, artificial aids um, to try to bring it so that my eye and how I'm seeing it is translated directly onto the painting. If we rely on the tools a little bit too much, we can get in our own way with that. So we're not doing that at all today. We're using it directly from the reference and just looking at it. So it won't be exactly like the reference, it won't, but we'll have that as our basis. As you can see, I'm just putting in the background here. Mixed up a, a palette that's, that's fairly close to the painting I'm just using oranges and, and sort of uh, pale yellows and, and a slight green and this blue here in the in the foreground and we're gonna mix in and make what looks like the water here uh, being quite bold with it at this stage extremely abstract because that's how I work I usually paint a very abstract picture to start with and then refine it until it's as as realistic as I want it to be it is possible to carry on going with these kind of paintings and, and twiddle with them until they're super, super realistic. Um, but that's not the goal here. The goal is to get an impression of the, of the painting and 
to get something that just brings sort of a, a feeling of hope for us for the future. increase the blending nature of the brush so uh, it mixes more with the paint that's on the canvas this will add some interest as we go and bring a kind of almost hazy dreamlike feel to the to the picture made that shadow under the tree a little bit large but we'll uh, see about sorting it later i'm probably going to darken this foreground a little more uh, because it's distracting us it's bringing our eye right down to the bottom of the painting constantly and i want our focal point to be that tree in the distance but for the time being let's just get in just kind of cover the canvas really we can worry about the the details as we go i do want there to be some dynamic color in the canvas because there could be a tendency for everything to turn a little orange um, so i'm putting a little bit of blue here and there just to, just to bring something out Let's work on the detail in the distance here. The tree still looks a little small, so I'm going to make it a little larger. Sort of block it out in the dark areas first. And I'll add some more light into it as we go. There's a little tree behind there. And maybe one in the distance. A shadow in, in the water. There's reflection. Using a much smaller brush now. Putting in some of the uh, blue here to just make the, the colours pop a little bit better and mix nicely on the canvas. It won't be visible all the way through the painting, but um, 
it's a good idea to put them in just to just so you've got something to mix up from. on the trees on the branches and we'll put in some of these ones that go further back too future that one behind there my style tends to be a little bit impressionistic um, and this is probably the most um, realistic painting I've done or will be doing or have done in some time um, even though uh, it doesn't actually come from real life at all which I find a little ironic Impression of some tree, some sort of hillside in the background there. It's that light colour. The idea of some trees back there too. The great thing about art is it's all sort of abstract when you're doing paintings. There is, um, there's nothing that's that's actually realistic about any painting. Um, everything you put on a canvas is just brush strokes. Um, so we have to think of it all in, in, a, in a sort of abstract sort of way while we're doing any kind of painting. It's just sort of the levels of detail and how representational it becomes. And there's a sort of a line between how, how representational something is and how abstract it becomes. This is going to be more representational maybe than many of my other paintings, but there's also a feeling of uh, abstraction too in the way that the paint strokes get put down on the canvas. Just making these that kind of shapes of trees there in the background without actually painting any any trees or leaves. So you're just leaving those dark areas there. So when we come out, you'll you'll see that they kind of look like there's maybe some trees there. So there we go. Look, a couple of uh, trees and an extra one there in the foreground. See, gives an idea that there's trees there. And they're really just sort of big blobs of color. Right there into the to the water. A little tiny touch of blue into the into the sky. Although we will probably go over that later. I want to bring the painting to life a bit with with some with some blue. Seems about time to work on the water a little more. Get some more interest in there. Darken up some of these areas at the front. A 
We're just trying to make sure that there's some colour in the dark areas. Just so they don't die. Heading a little bit blue there into the tree. Into some of these uh, shaded areas. Work some more here in the background. Create the impression that there's uh, some trees there. I'm not going to go into quite as much detail as the focus tree because I don't want to pull all our focus away from it. But I do want to give us an impression that there are trees here, here in the background. So we're just putting some extra color in there, making it a little stronger. Once again, as you can see, I'm putting some blue in. Not a lot, just a little. Uh, maybe a few little uh, touches of the impression of flowers. Just something growing there. Just to give us a focal lead into the painting. Add a bit of extra touches of lightness coming through the trees. on the water. Echo that into the sky. I'm not sure about this uh, light area here on the right hand side at the bottom. Uh, it's obviously reflecting of the tree, but I may change that in the future. Just using a palette knife here, just a wet one, just to, to smear some of the painting around a bit, give more an impression of, of water. To break up the tree branches a little as well. Just to get that more slightly abstract feel as I like into a painting. I don't want things to look too fiddly, that sort of goes against my natural inclination for a painting. Let's put some light in there, but it's maybe a little too much, but we'll see in the future. Yeah, let's bring some light in there. It's all starting to come together. work on the detail in the water here. Yeah, I'm going to go over this very bright area, just tone it down a little bit. And get that real orangey colour into the into the water here because it does feel like it needs it. Maybe some extra definition in these reflections. that over a little bit. It's a little too powerful. It draws our attention far too much. We want that focus to be on those trees in the background. It needs to be sort of leading us into those. Darken this area off a little bit. Using very much more opaque paint here. So it's not blending in quite as much. But I'll be doing more blending in a moment, but we're just sort of getting the, the idea of the slight waves, the ripples on the lake back in. Get some extra definition to these reflections at the bottom. in because we've lost a little bit. There you go. Put some into that. Just mix it in there. Yeah, 
think I'm probably going to cover over the, that right hand reflection just because I don't want our eye drawn away from the center. And uh, there's a little bit of white there in the left hand side in the reflection. I may dull that out a little bit as well. But I want this blue here just to, just to lift the painting a little bit. Yeah, let's just fill that in. There we go. Right, now let's blend it all in. Mix it back across there. A bit more naturalistic. Just uh, take the edge off of some of that. purple colour there. Now back with a palette knife, mixing it all in to get that real water-like feel across it. Thank you for watching my video. If you've watched this far, you might as well like it, subscribe, and even hit the bell so you can get to see more of them in the future. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time.